now we will talk about few important terms which we need to know to understand the chapter further so what are the terms to understand all these terms will move back to the reflection now see for this is a a reflecting surface this is a short oblique lines now this is our surface and on this reflecting surface when a ray of light falls when on this reflecting surface when a ray of light falls this i have made uh, so big and broad just uh, so, so that it becomes visible nicely nothing else so when this ray of light comes you know it falls it falls on this reflecting surface so we can denote this point as oteron this is a ray of light which falls on the reflecting surface so whenever a ray of light falls on the reflecting surface then it is known as incident ray it is known as incident ray and it get reflected back it get reflected back it get reflected back from this point o and it will be shown from this arrow why because it is going in the other direction here i can write a so ao will be the incident ray ao will be the incident ray a ray falling on any reflecting surface now when the ray of light which has fall on the reflecting surface if it gets you know it it, it is getting reflected it is sent back then this is known as reflected ray then it is known as reflected ray now this is the point o where from where uh the light has again got reflected now there is a normal which is drawn at the center there is a line which is perpendicular i am just drawing so uh you know and so dark just so that it become visible or is there is no need to da, to draw lines in such a dark way it is just one straight line so this is known as normal please remember we will not say normal ray this is just a perpendicular drawn and uh, this cannot be written as the ray now what is the next thing which we need to know is now the angle this i can write over here now this is a and this if i denote it is b and if i denote this normal as c so ab is a sorry ao is what an incident ray ab is incident ray bo is reflected ray o is point of incidence and co is a normal so now we'll talk about the angle which is made 
Now just pay attention. A O C can be denoted as angle of. Uh, it can be denoted by small i, and this is known as angle of incident. What is there? The how can we define? We need to define also all these terms, and we'll be discussing also. So how to? What is the meaning of this? Now A O C. This angle. is denoted by small i and this can be known as angle of incidence which is formed between uh, incident ray and the normal angle which is formed between the incident ray and the normal can be denoted as small i and this is known as angle of incidence now similarly if we talk about this side when the reflected ray makes the angle with the normal then it is denoted by small r and it is known as angle of reflection and how it is made it is made with the between the reflected ray and the normal and what is the angle it is boc the angle is boc so here what is i i is angle of incidence and r is angle of reflection now this i can be you it is used to denote okay and if we have to write the angle then ao a o c and c o b so a o c is angle of incidence which can be denoted by small i and c o b is angle of reflection which is denoted by small r now how to define all these how to define all these so now we'll be defining all these and uh, first of all we'll talk about the incident ray first of all we'll talk about the incident ray i will just write the reflection up so that it will become easy to understand and to write also so we will be discussing about the first term and that is incident ray this is the first term and this one is incident ray how can we define incident ray children when the ray of light and the ray of light falls on the reflecting surface when the ray of light falls when the ray of light falls on a reflecting surface when the ray of light falls on the reflecting surface then it is known as incident ray now when the same line is sent when the same ray is sent back then it is known as reflected ray when the same ray when the incident ray is sent back then it is known as reflected ray so when when a ray of when a ray of light is sent back i'm not writing over here in a complete sentence 
it's not about writing the definitions on the blackboard it's about explaining understanding so i'm not writing the complete definition over here on the blackboard so just now what we have discussed we have discussed incident ray what is the meaning of incident ray when the ray of light falls on the reflecting surface then it is known as incident ray when the incident ray get you know it's sent back then this it is known as reflected ray now the third one we'll be talking about the normal now the third one we'll be talking about the normal what is normal a perpendicular drawn a perpendicular drawn is the normal i will write over here a perpendicular drawn a perpendicular What's the meaning of perpendicular? That means it's making a nine, uh, an angle of ninety degree. Yes. So perpendicular drawn. From where it is drawing? From the point of incidence. Point of incidence. The per perpendicular drawn from the point of incidence and point of incidence is what? O. and this is known as normal we have to remember that it, we won't be calling it as a normal ray it is just a perpendicular drawn from the point of incidence and it is known as normal now now we'll talk about the fourth one which is angle of incidence we are talking about the angle of incidence now how can we define angle of incidence the angle made by the incident ray and the normal the angle made by the incident ray and the normal angle made by incident ray and the normal and as we have discussed that it is denoted by small i here aoc this angle is angle of incidence and it is denoted by small i now we'll talk about the fifth one which is angle of reflection angle of reflection now what does this angle of reflection means the angle made between the reflected ray and the normal the angle made by the normal and the reflected ray so the angle made by reflected ray and the normal and we all know that it is denoted by small r this angle can be denoted as small r right now we'll talk about the next point now the green one okay now we will talk about the next one which is plane of incidence now plane of incidence and the last one will be plane of reflection what is the meaning of plane of incidence and plane of reflection so 
the plane containing the ray and the normal the plane which contains the ray and the normal okay the point this point okay the point which is or we can say even the the plane this plane which is uh, which contains uh, what it is containing it is containing the incident ray this incident ray and the normal actually it is same only but still the plane which is which is which contains okay what it has got incident ray and the normal the plane the plane which has got which contains the incident ray and the normal so the plane which contains the incident ray and the normal and similarly how can we define the plane of reflection the plane which contains the plane which contains the reflected ray and the normal so these are few terms which are very very important to understand the further the, the other topics in the chapter so here what all we have discussed we uh, have discussed we know now what is the meaning of incident ray whenever a light falls on any reflecting surface whenever a light falls on any reflecting surface then it is known as incident ray when this light is sent back then it is known as reflected ray a perpendicular is drawn in between and uh, this makes the angle with both the angle of in, uh, the uh, with the incident ray also and with the reflected ray also so uh, when it makes the angle when the normal makes the angle with the incident ray then it is known as angle of incident and uh, when it makes the uh, angle with the reflected ray that means uh, from this ray it is known as angle of uh, reflection so it is denoted by small i and this one is noted by small r now o is the point of incidence and when we talk about the plane of incidence then the point the plane which contains the incident ray and the normal is known as the plane of incidence and the plane which con which contains the reflected ray and the normal it is known as plane of reflection so these are few terms which are very very important to understand and the uh, the next what we are going to talk about now is the law of reflection in law of ref reflection we need to know the incident ray reflected ray normal angle of incidence angle of reflection plane and so that was the reason that we have discussed all this thing so now whenever reflection takes place whenever reflection takes place the reflection takes place on the basis of the law now what are the laws we'll be talking about the laws of reflection we'll be understanding these things in detail now so please note all these definitions it is written in the most easiest way it can be it is written in very easy form or else if we talk about any textbook you will find that the uh, the definitions are given in a very complicated way so here we have discussed in a very simple and the simplest form which one can uh, make so please note this and now we'll talk about the laws of reflection now we will talk about the laws of reflection whenever an incident ray get reflected it follows rules now what are the rules what are the laws of reflection so we'll discuss about the laws of reflection we are talking about laws of reflection 
so there are two laws of reflection there are two laws of reflection the first law says that incident ray incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all three always lies in the same plane and here also we can see that the incident ray the reflected ray and the normal all three are at the in the same plane are in the same plane and so this is only the first law that it has to be in the same plane so just i'll write this law first law first law says that the incident ray the incident ray reflected ray reflected ray and the normal and the normal will always lie in the same plane will lie in the same plane now what is the second law the second law says that the angle of incidence angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection that means angle of i is always equal to the angle of reflection so let's write about that the second law what does the second law says that the angle of reflection i will start with incidence the angle of incidence is always equal the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle i will write capital angle of a reflection we all know that angle of incidence can be represented by small i and it is equal to the angle of reflection which can be denoted by r so angle i will always be equal to the angle r what does it means it means if angle i if angle i is of 30 degree then angle r will also be of 30 degree and if angle i if angle i is of 40 degree then even the angle of reflection will be of 40 degree so this is the plane and this is the normal this is the incident ray and this will be now reflected ray but it will be always equal the angle will be always equal if it is of 30 degree if it is of 30 degree see this one is angle of incident this one is angle of reflection this one is the plane this one is the plane this is angle i this is angle r and even i can write here a b c and o so if angle i is of 30 degree then even this angle i r will be of 30 degree and in second case where i have quoted the example of 40 degree so if angle again the plane surface and the incident ray the normal and if incident ray is of 40 then even this will be of 40 so i have nothing to measure i'm just uh, drawing very very randomly but just wanted to show that if it is of 40 then even this has to be of 40 so this will be of also 40 if it is of 40 degree and even this will be of 
40 degree. So, if the angle changes to 45, then again the reflected angle will also change to the 45. Again here also the same thing is there, this is reflected ray, sorry incident ray, this is reflected ray, this is the normal, this is point of incidence, this is angle I, this is angle R. So, angle I is always equal to angle R. Now, what will happen if the incident ray comes through the normal? What will happen when the incident ray? Children, this is about the law of reflection, which is uh, there are two laws. So, first law says that the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal will always lie in the same plane. And the second law says that angle I will always be equal to angle R. That means angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. Now, I am talking about a situation, a condition when the incident ray, we are seeing incident ray over here. This is our incident ray, it is rubbed by mistake incident ray. Now, what I am saying is, this is an incident ray. If this incident ray falls, comes from this path, it comes through the normal, then what will happen children? Suppose, this is our reflecting surface, this one as this is our plane. And this is the normal, this is the normal and if the incident ray follows the same path of the normal, then what will be the angle of incidence, then what will be the angle of incidence. So children, in this case, when the incident ray, I will make an arrow because this is an incident ray which is following the path of the normal, if an incident ray comes, you know, falls, strikes the surface by the, uh, through the normal only, then the angle of incidence will be equal to 0. Then angle of incidence will equal to be 0. Then what will be the angle of reflection when the angle of incidence is equal to the 0 degree? Then obviously the angle of reflection because it will always follow the rule that angle I will always be equal to the angle R. Angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. So, when angle of uh, incidence uh, angle I is equal to 0, then what will be the case with angle of reflection? And, uh, so, this will be also 0. What does it mean? What does it mean? That when the ray of light falls, it comes to the normal, the angle of incidence will become 0 and it will go back from the same path. It will go back, it will be reflected following the same path and so we will make the two arrows, one showing this one showing that incident ray is coming through the normal and the other arrow shows that the reflected ray also follows the same path. It will also go back following the same path that of the normal. So, in any case, in any situation, the angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. Angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. So, these are the laws of reflection. The first law says that the incident ray, the reflected ray and the normal, all three will lie in the same plane. Whereas, the second law says that the angle of incidence will always be equal to the angle of reflection. If angle I is equal to 30, 35, then the angle of reflection will also be equal to 30 and 35 respectively. If the angle of reflection, uh, sorry, angle of incidence is 45 or 40, same will be the case of the reflected angle of reflection. But the third condition, if the angle of 
uh, I is 0 that means it comes the incident ray follows the uh, normal it comes to the path of the normal then the angle I will become 0 in this case angle R will also become 0 because it will come from the path, the path it has come from the path of what it has come to the normal again it will go back it will be reflected from the same path and so that is the reason I have made two arrows one showing the incident ray striking the surface and other showing the reflected ray moving out from the same surface. So this is all about the laws of reflection. Please note all these points so that we can move to the next topic.